Good afternoon, students. So today we are going to carry on with our Kirchhoff's current law. So as we discussed about our Kirchhoff's voltage law, similarly, Kirchhoff gave the second law depending upon the addition of the currents. If you just check out your this diagram, you are going to find out that this total current I is incoming. The direction of it is inwards, while if you check the direction of I1, I2, and I3, it is outwards from this node. Let's say this node is A. So when we are going to define our Kirchhoff's current law in a single equation, you can just write down that the total current that is entering the node A is equal to the sum of the currents that are going outwards from that node. That is the sum I1, I2, and I3. So basically, when we are talking about Kirchhoff's current law, it simply tells us that total current that enters any node is equal to the total current that is outgoing from that node. So depending upon our this equation, we are going to solve our question number one, where you are provided with 50 amperes current here, you are provided with 20 amperes current that is entering R1, 10 amperes current that is entering R2 and the value of I3 is to be calculated. So here we are going to apply over the same thing here. So here I means we have got 50 amperes. So now similar to I1, I2 and I3, this is going inwards while these are going outwards from that node. So your I1 becomes equals to 20, I2 becomes equals to 10 and the value of I3 needs to be calculated. So I think you all can do it. So this becomes I3 equals to 50 minus 30. That gives you the value of 20 amperes. Right. So depending on this, we are going to go for our next numeric. So now we come on to our numerical number two, in which you have to calculate the value of V10. V10 means the voltage drop across this 10 ohms resistor, right? So that means to calculate the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, according to Ohm's law, you have to go for IR, where the value of this resistor is equals to 10 ohm. So if I apply here the Ohm's law with the value of R here, so this becomes 10 I. So that means I need to calculate my this I and I here stands for my this I2. So here I am putting I2 here. So the main thing that I require to do is calculate I2. So because I have to apply my KCL. So here just see here that this 10 amperes that is the source current which is given here is going inwards while rest of the currents I1, I2, I3 that is also a current source of 5 amperes and I4 they all are going outwards. So let's put out the value of your KCL in that form. So total current 10 will be equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3 and I4. Now you all know that when we are talking about your parallel circuit, if my these resistances are in parallel, then only thing that divides in a parallel circuit is the total current IT that comes here. While the voltage across all these parallel branches remain same as V, whatever we have applied here will be applicable to whole of the branches. Like if I have applied here 10 volts and here the resistance is two ohms, here the resistance is five ohms, then my this whole 10 will be available at 5 ohms as well as at 2 ohms. Now, if you want to calculate the value of I1 here and I2 here, by simple ohms law, you can calculate using, let's say we have to find I2. So your I2 will be equal to total voltage V divided by the value of your this resistor 5. So the value of V is 10. So that means the current that you will be getting here will be two amperes. Similarly, if I want to calculate the value of I1, it will be equal to 10 divided by two, that is my five amperes, right? So applying the same thing over here, 
in this equation, I am going to put all the values in terms of V. Let's suppose that the voltage across these branches is equals to V. So let me put the value of I1, I2, I3 in terms of V here. So here I'm going to put the value as V divided by five, V divided by 10. I3 is given as five. So we will be writing the numerical value only of I3. And last it will be V upon one equals to 10. So now we are going to solve it. We are going to take your this five over to this side. So that becomes equals to 10 minus five here. So this becomes equals to 10 minus five that is equal to five only. And from here it will be canceled because I have taken it towards that side. So keeping V outside, we will be having one upon five plus one upon 10 plus one equals to five. Now take the LCM and calculate the value of V. Right. So now this comes out to be V multiplied by so this one by five becomes 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus one equals to five that gives me the value of V equals to five divided by 1.3 that will give me a value around 3.8 volts, right? So because I have got the value of V, so I can very well calculate the current in the 10 ohms resistor as well as the voltage across the 10 ohms resistor. And if you have paid attention to me, what I have told you before is as the voltage remains same, so when I told you that V equals to 3.8 volts, at the same time, you should tell me that, ma'am, this is 3.8 volts is the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor as well, right? So the only thing now we need to calculate is the current through the 10 ohm resistor. So that becomes V divided by 10, 10 that is 3.8 divided by 10 becomes equals to 0 0.38 amperes. So this is the value of the current in the 10 ohm resistor. So this is all for Kirchhoff's current law. Now we will be going for our voltage division and current divisions. So before we start with your voltage division and current division, you must pay attention to that in which type of circuit the voltage gets divided. If I have got a voltage V here and there is a series of resistors connected like this, let me take only two resistor at this time. So one is R1 and second is R2. Then we say that the voltage will get divided between R1 and R2, where your V will be equal to V1 plus V2. So according to the voltage division rule, if I want to know, let's say this is the total voltage Vt. So if I am going to apply my voltage division rule and I want to calculate V1 as well as V2 using it, so it will become the total voltage Vt that we have applied to the circuit multiplied by the resistance across which we want to know the voltage and divided by the sum of the two resistances that is R1 plus R2. Similarly, I think you can write down the formula for V2. Kindly note it down yourself because it will only be, everything will remain same with the difference that here it will become V2, here it will become R2 because we want to take it across R2. So this is with our voltage division rule and you should always pay attention to that the voltage divides only in a series circuit. While your this current that flows through it, just remember that this is a single wire and so the current that starts from here has to come back to your, this battery's negative terminal. So that means your, this I will come back here. So there will be no division of current in a series circuit because we have got a single wire here, right? So now we come on to your current source. When I talk about the current division, 
then it is the opposite of your this thing. So now I have to go for your, this is my current source IT, let's say, and these are my parallel branches. Let's say this is my R1 and this is my R2. The current coming here is I1 while the current coming here is I2. So now depending on the current division formula, I have to write down the formula for current division. For that, I have to calculate the value of I1 here. And now just pay attention that when I1 is to be calculated, like in this case, we have got VT total. So here it will be IT total. So total current IT entering into these two branches before getting divided into them, multiplied by, now we want to calculate this. So we will multiply it with the other branch. How much current is going to this branch depends on the value of your, this resistor divided by R1 plus R2. That is the sum of the two resistors. In spite of them being in parallel, it will always be the total resistor, R1 plus R2. Right. So similarly, if you want to calculate the value of I2, so you will simply replace this with two and this with one. Rest all the things will remain same. Fine. So now let's find out the value uh, numerical using this. So now our question is to calculate the value of V2 and V1 using your voltage division rule. So here just I am going to write down the formula again that becomes equals to v1 will be equals to total voltage vt multiplied by the resistor across which i have to find the value of v1 that is 40 divided by the sum of the total resistances so here it will be 40 plus 2 plus 8 and that becomes equals to Vt that is equals to let me write down the value here of Vt that is 100. So it becomes 100 multiplied by 40. This makes it to be 10 and so it will be 50. And this will become equal to my V1. So this becomes equal to 2 and this becomes equals to 80 volt. So now to calculate V2 you can either subtract your this 80 from 100 and the remaining voltage will be across it that is coming out to be 20 volts or you can simply apply your voltage division formula that will be equal to this is your method one with which you can find the value of your v2 and this is your method number two that is v2 will be equal to total voltage 100 multiplied by the resistor across which we have to find the value divided by the sum of the total resistance. So that becomes equal to again 20 volts. So I think that this is clear. So the next numerical we are going to do with your current division rule. So here you are provided with the total current that is entering here that is your nine amperes and now you have to calculate the values of I1 and I2 using your current division formula. So I am writing here I1. I1 was equals to total current IT multiplied by the opposite branch resistor. That is the value one here. This is one divided by sum of the two resistances. That is three. So total current is nine multiplied by one is as good as nine divided by three makes it to be three amperes. So the next step is method one nine minus three is six. Otherwise you can directly apply your current division rule that will be total current I that is nine multiplied by opposite branch resistance that is two divided by sum of the two resistances that is three that makes it to be six amperes. The sum of these two should always be nine amperes. Now, when we have applied voltage division as well as current division, there is a very important point that has come up in front of our eyes and what is that is just see one ampere current resistance of one is half that of two ohms and the current that is passing through is double of that so that means we come up with a very important property of current that 
kindly note it in your notebooks and keep it in your mind always because when we are going to learn the theorems in the next lecture it is going to be used there right so the property of the current is current always follows the least resistive path right and in the previous example when we did the voltage division rule if you all remember what was there i gave you a 100 volt source here the voltage was 40 while here the voltage total 8 plus 2 was equals to 10 so the voltage v1 was more as compared to voltage v2 the drop across the bigger resistor is more why because our voltage vx that is the drop across any resistor is directly proportional to the magnitude of that resistor more the value of the resistor more will be the voltage drop across that resistor so these points you have to keep in your mind and to be very truthful your this point is going to be used again and again once we start our theorems that the current follows the least resistive path and where it is going to be used when we are going to short the voltage sources for solving our theorems that is the Thevenin theorem Norton theorem and all so for your tomorrow's homework you all should be familiar with the statement of the Thevenin theorem. There is no need to mug up the Thevenin theorem because I am here to tell you that what every point in Thevenin theorem means. And we are going to do the numericals based on your Thevenin theorem. So we will start again from the simple ones to the tough ones. So that's all. Thank you so much.